when I was in university, I remember once I was on a bus ride from one state to another, and it was a long trip. And I had a, another kid who was around my age, and he was sitting next to me, and we got to know one another. And he was telling me about his 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 life's journey. He was adopted as a child. His mother had given him up, and he he didn't know her. And his foster parents or his adopted parents had not left him wanting for anything. They they gave him no lack of love. They 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 treated him as wonderfully as as parents could treat a child. But when he became an adult, there were questions that he needed to know about his biological mother that he just, he could not know himself fully without knowing who his mom was. He needed to know there were questions about himself that he just wouldn't be able to ever answer without his mother. Did he have her face? Did he have her temperament? Did he have her smile? Did he have her wit? Did he have her hands? And so he went on a journey to get to know her. And Later on, I would reflect on this story and realize that the greatest absence is not a person not knowing who their mother or their father is, even though that is absolutely an absence. And we would all, we would all undertake journeys to get to know where we come from. But the greatest absence is not knowing who your Lord is, not knowing who God is, not knowing who Allah is, this world that we live in being able to navigate it without knowing the attributes of the one who created it. High school students in an Islamic school were asked how many of them felt that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was angry with them. And over half of those kids raised their hands. I want you to think about that. This, these are kids who are receiving a proper Islamic education and they felt that they, in their adolescence, have already put themselves in a position to earn the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So what then about people who are even more distant, whose only exposure to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy and forgiveness is what they have seen of forgiveness and mercy manifested in the faces of religious people. That is why it is so important that we learn about Allah from Allah and from His Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This course about the names of Allah, in essence, is a dua course because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ الْأَسْمَاءُ الْحُسْنَ فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا To Allah belong the most beautiful names, so call upon Him by those names. And so when you learn about the names of Allah, every single name becomes a cause or a key for you to access through your dua. And dua transforms your life. And even now, as we are going through this incredible experience of, of a pandemic and COVID-19 and economies being shut down and people losing jobs and people losing loved ones, there are two experiences. There are those who when they lose their job, they know to call upon a razzaq When they lose a loved one, they know that the one who took away their loved one is a rahman and he is more forgiving and more merciful to their loved one than they are. And the one who goes through sickness is calling upon a shafi, the one to heal him. And the one who's going through anxiety and stress is calling upon al wakil the one who they entrust. That person is going through a completely different experience than the one who is asking, why me? And why this? And why God? And then when you are able to take those names and pair it with dua and transform your circumstances because you are calling upon the one who is Al-Qadir, the one who is able, and Al-Mujib, the one who responds. And so you are able to lift yourselves out of every difficulty because you are calling upon a king who is mighty in his power. Why I made this class in particular, this was the first class that I taught with the Maghrib Institute and it was a no-brainer for me. This was the class that I wanted to teach. It wasn't being taught. And uh, to be honest, this, this, this subject, I won't say receives a bad rap, but this subject is, is looked at as elementary. It's looked at as Sunday school. That's why there aren't a lot of books in English about it. But at the same time, this is the greatest subject. And it's the most important subject because there is no subject greater than Allah Azza wa Himself. There's nothing more spiritually enriching. There's nothing that is more iman lifting. And even when this subject is being studied, a lot of times it is being studied academically without the spirituality. It's like reading a driver's manual, but never actually going out to drive. And so you receive the rules and you receive the limits and you receive the, the, the green light and the red light and the stop sign and all of that, but you don't get to enjoy the beauty of actually driving. And so in this course, 
I actually tell it in story form because the goal is not that you simply learn the rules and the goal is not simply that you simply learn the names, but that you see how these names are supposed to manifest in a person's life. And a lot of the stories that I share are my personal stories, not because I couldn't have gotten more examples from more books from great scholars who, who wrote about these topics over the centuries, but because I want to show you that these names are supposed to be incredibly personal to you and that you should have your own stories that you can manifest for every name that you experience. Here's the thing. I've read many books on this subject and then I've taught it over three years. And even as I'm teaching it from city to city, people are coming up to me and presenting to me this book and this book. And I just had a friend who came from Saudi Arabia, bought a book and then brought it to me in Houston just because he knew I was looking for it. So you're talking about three years of global research and people coming and telling me stories and then me, you know, either sharing these stories or it affecting the way that I, and the points that I derived and the fruits that I derived, you're talking about a cumulative effort of more than three years present, being presented in this course. I can humbly say that from the presentation to the storytelling to the, the names of course and the fruits that you're not going to find anything like this in English. Listen, I have no problem at all say you need to take this course. No problem. It's not about me at all. Zero percent. It is about learning about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I have no, there's no like fear of humility here or anything like that. Why? Because I'm not, it's not about me at all. It's about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And everybody needs to know who Allah is. And I always get this pushback, which is, well, I already know the names of Allah. Oh, you do? Great. When was the last time you called upon Allah by his name and Muhammad? When was the last time you called upon Allah by his name al Quddus? When was the last time that you called upon Allah by his name as salam Right? Because at the end of the day, even if you know more about the names of Allah than I do, wonderful, great, no problem, you will still benefit from what? From being reminded. Because it's not about how much you know, but it's about what you put into practice. Remind because reminding benefits the believers. We all benefit from being reminded. We are all required to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to use his blessed names. And I want you absolutely to not just watch this video, but I challenge you to then go and share this with other people, your WhatsApp groups, your Twitter groups, all of this type of stuff. Everyone is in need of learning who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is.